In today's video, I'm discussing five movement techniques that you need to be using more in your gameplay, and I'm going to help you understand why. Look, I know flashy movement has its allure in Apex. People love to try to emulate some of this advanced movement technique that they see here on YouTube or just from their favorite content creator. But one of the biggest issues I see as a player and as a coach is that some of you guys confuse when and why these sort of techniques are actually useful and how they play a role in fights. So basically, if you want to improve some little things in your gameplay that will have a big difference in the outcome of those games, I encourage you to watch this video until the end. The first movement technique is strafing. Learning and incorporating a healthy strafe in your fights is something that is crucial to winning those fights. Something as simple as moving left to right or otherwise known as A and D strafe is probably one of the best movement techniques there is. Yes, it's something simple, but as a player with over 5,000 hours in this game and probably another thousand hours in coaching players, trust me when I speak on this, the movement techniques to focus on the most are the ones that you use in the majority of the situations you find yourself in. Like, yeah, it's cool to learn how to super glide or zip line super jump, but those are so niche and those are so advanced. A and D strafing is something you will use in like 90% of the close range engagements you get into. It's very important to be utilizing hip firing here while strafing in those appropriate moments. Now obviously different weapons have different strafe speeds and that speed is then altered further when you ADS versus when you hip fire. Guns like LMGs have the slowest strafe speed whereas pistols have the fastest. Movement plays a vital role in Apex, but do remember that the more complex your strafe is, the harder it will be to land your shots. The only time you should be trying to make it more complex is when you have to really avoid taking more damage. A quick example here is if you are in a 1v1 and you just dealt 140 damage to your opponent and you only took 50 damage. In this scenario, focus more on just hitting those remaining shots and less about your movement. If you just hit your shots, the opponent will go down. But if you fail to recognize these little things, this is where overdoing the movement techniques backfire on you. If you are just starting out, try a simple strafe such as going left to right and then right to left. Then you can move on to more complex movement once you are comfortable. The second movement technique is slide jumping and jump sliding. Now this is a very simple thing most of you aren't doing in fights that could have the biggest impact in you winning those fights. Of course, all of you know what a slide jump is. It helps you close the gap quicker than just by simply running. And it's also a little bit more unpredictable. But incorporating this during fights is what will make all of the difference here. The trick to slide jumping is being able to do it at the correct times. For example, if a team is just staring you down, you most likely will not want to slide jump across an open field into no cover. Try to use distractions and line of sight to your advantage. Some of the best players have this movement tech down and precisely know when to slide jump to close the gap. Your goal is to minimize the damage taken while being able to take a position that favors your angle in the fight. If you execute this effectively, it's bound to make the fight happen and quickly. You will also notice how this surprises your opponent as anytime players are met with extremely aggressive pushes, it's really hard to counter and read. Jump sliding on the other hand has similar utility, but it's more for this momentum push. If you jump off of something and into a slide, you can create more space in a more unpredictable manner. And as you can see in some of these clips that I've been showing you, it works out quite well, especially when you utilize close range guns here. Look for little surfaces that you could slide off of to create extra momentum. Something as little as a box or something that's flat on the map that is elevated. These little things make a huge difference in how your movement becomes harder to read and harder to combat. If you guys are enjoying this video and you'd like to hear the rest of these tips, all I ask in return is that you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's free, it only takes a second of your time, and it really does help this video out. I mean, for giving all these tips to you, just hitting the like button in return, kind of a fair deal, right? The third movement technique is the wall bounce. Ah, the wall bounce. At some point, every player wants to learn this technique because it looks so cool. But why is wall bouncing useful? Well, simply put, it's unpredictable. However, it is still readable for a lot of good players. The way I see wall bouncing is it should either be used as a retreat technique to avoid taking some damage, ultimately by surprising your opponent's tracking and aim, or the second way is on the offensive. Same concepts, however you are now using line of sight coupled with the wall bounce to strike a quick blow to your opponent. This technique is the most advanced one that I'm going to be covering because I think it has the most utility in terms of the amount of situations you will find yourself in that a wall bounce could be useful. 
Lots of players learn how to wall bounce, but never implement it in game or even in an engagement. So a good way to practice the wall bounce is to just do it while you are rotating around the map. The last thing you want to do is go for that wall bounce that will surprise the enemy and then just miss it. The wall bounce can lead to some pretty cool clips, but be sure to use it sparingly. The fourth technique is climbing. Once again, a very simple movement technique that helps you take height during fights. You guys know how to climb. Some of you are still struggling with certain climbs, but that's okay. The key here is to understand that high ground is usually king and apex. Listen, something as simple as climbing a little rock and playing on top of it could be a huge difference maker to catching your opponent off guard while you beam them for 60 damage for free. Climbing up on things and taking height can be a huge advantage that allows you to beam someone from a place that they don't expect you to be. The element of surprise is highly underrated in a game like Apex, and one thing to note about taking height in a fight, whether it's long range or close range, is that it can lead you to be more exposed, especially whenever you are close range. You have to understand that when you're climbing up something, your weapon can't be out because you're in the climbing animation, so the key is to never be climbing something in the line of sight of your opponent. This little thing can be the biggest attributor to some of your deaths, if you are not super mindful of angles or while you're climbing. This is another reason the wall bounce can be a great utility, but it only works in certain scenarios where you can wall bounce and eliminate the climbing animation. In places like the zipline buildings, one thing I've noticed over time is inexperienced players tend to ride the zipline straight up to height and get knocked by whoever is holding height. But experienced players look to utilize other mechanisms to breach high ground, and climbing up is a real tactic here. So consider this simple movement tech much more as you go into your future games. I think it'll surprise you guys. The fifth movement technique is crouching. Crouching is a very important movement technique that most of you have got wrong. See, a common mistake I see particularly from newer players is yes, they crouch, but they get stuck crouching. And this is terrible for two reasons. One, your movement is slowed when you are crouching. And two, you are basically a balled up target that makes landing headshots on you way easier. This will speed up how quickly you're dying if you get stuck crouching. However, crouching is most beneficial in the moments when you need to block line of sight from your enemies. Being able to hide for a few seconds can give you time to heal and reset in the fight. Crouching can also be used in the first tip I mentioned about strafing. This is also known as the crouch spam. Just be sure to time the crouches correctly as you might not finish the complete crouching animation or you may do it too rapidly and in turn, you're gonna be missing more shots and you're not being as evasive as you think you are. I don't really like the term crouch spam, I think of it more as a healthy pace of crouching and coming back up. I promise you guys, if you implement these five simple movement techniques more, and you're more mindful of how you are using them, you will see more success in Apex Legends. I want you guys to not conflate a super advanced niche movement tech with success in Apex. Yes, we see a lot of creators doing them, but there are plenty more who aren't really utilizing them and still finding a ton of success. It's the little things in Apex that make a big difference. If anyone is new here and you aren't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so as my channel centers around helping you all improve at Apex Legends. Season 12, we're gonna go absolutely crazy. So stick around. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you on my next upload. Peace.